Now we're going to get into the film here. Dolphins game. This is your interception. I'm going to let it roll here. Then I want you to walk us through the scheme, the technique, the assignment, what you saw from top to bottom to, to pick off the quarterback here in the playoffs. Yeah, man. Uh, if you ask all those 10 guys on that field right there, was Dean in the right position? He was, <laughs> uh, being straight. Um, we have this this call um, that's predicated off of uh, where the um, where the quarterback is located. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of like our quarters calls and our call with the quarterback. Is he in the gun? Is he in the under center um, kind of deal? Kind of like. It was weird. He started off in the gun and then he came back under center and I kind of stayed in that call. And I was just mm. like, this is what I see. And everyone else is looking at me like, why the hell is Dean so low down? Right. Uh, ball snapped. Um, Poyers basically know. I mean, I mean, we've played together for a while, so he kind of knows. He's like, oh, man, Dean's down. I'm going to just, you know, close the post slowly. Um, so we kind of turned it into, you know, a different call on the run cover that three makes. essentially it looked like a cover three slice from him where he sliced that over route this looks like cover three to us. oh yeah you're, saying, <laughs> that, you're yeah. saying this is actually supposed to be quarters it's supposed to be quarters but <laughs> basically with me coming down right porter just kind of said oh dean's down i'm gonna just close the middle of the field yeah and whatever happens happens and then obviously trey there's a cover three slice going on and trey is right. just we're always taught when something is leaving your zone, you just fly high. You never know what can come That's back. Amazing. Um, and just I honestly, granted, I give more credit to the guys that I were, that I was playing with because they made me right. Um, and they played off of me knowing that I basically turned it into a whole different defense. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, this. This is amazing. They, yeah, they played off of me and then. From that point on, obviously, you know, I've been taught since I was a Pop Warner young kid, when there's a rollout boot to you, you just expand. You see uh, who your threat is. But the I know that if someone's in front of me, somebody's behind me. Behind you. Mm. Um, so I kind of, when I already knew I, you know, was in this position, I said, you know what, let me try and bait them a little bit. Like, let me try to stay low so I can, you know, have him think that that thing behind me is open and then you know i didn't know how deep that thing was i didn't it looked like it was probably around what 15 yards yeah, yeah. 20 20 yards uh intermediate. and poe was just in chase mode and then i seen him throw the ball and i just had to like quickly like pivot and just i was like i'm gonna go get that thing and i got it man. <laughs> and i made a i made a scary defensive play turn into a great defensive play so you know Amazing. I, that's amazing. You know, it, it's something that we always talk about when it comes to, you know, third parties like us that watch film and break down film or break down these plays and companies like PFF that go ahead and grade these plays and sell it as a product. Uh, this is a play that you probably got a really good grade on Dean for intercepting this ball here and doing a great job, obviously ad living here, but um, a play that in the grand scheme of things, you were, like you said, you admitted that you're you know, basically out of position. And this is what I love about this defense. We've talked about it with Rousseau. We talked about it with Elam. You know, the, the different choreography and ad-libbing and the continuity in this with this system that guys are able to, hey, know that one guy may, out of, may be out of position, but we know how to fill the gaps to overlap in those gray areas when, you know, something does go wrong. I love that about this play. If, again, we appreciate you being honest about it, but oh, we yeah. just love we love that about football and, and what we love about this defense. And you know what's crazy? I would probably say 50 to 60 percent of NFL plays that are made that are big time on defense are probably because somebody messed up mm -hmm. or somebody's not in the best position and they ended up making a, you know, something great out of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, to justify mine but there's a lot of guys that i've been with uh for a while that have made a lot of plays in this league and a lot of money in this league that where it's like hey like you know what i'm about to just go make a play Outside i'm not structure. in the right position but i'm gonna just do it and you know what you're never wrong your coach's eyes when you do something on your own and 
you make a play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, because everyone came to the sideline and I was like, wait, we're, we're not supposed to be deeper? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I just kind of <laughs> seen... went rogue. Yeah, I, I seen that it was a, a a shown quarterback under center, so I just went went down. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and, and thank thank God for thank God for Poe uh, saving me back there too. Um, and then Trey obviously pushing, closing the post, and that's one thing like you said about this this scheme that we're so quarterback vision based that if there are mistakes like this, we play off one another all the time. And, and that's kind of like what happened right here. Like they knew that I was playing something different and they turned it into what we would have been playing if we just said, hey, let's play this. Right. So uh, and then obviously it, it, it in a rollout boot, um, two man, two man route, deep route, uh, yeah. kind of, you know, it worked out the way it was supposed to work out. You know, yeah. you, you jogged, Anthony, I'm sorry, you jogged my memory. You know, something exactly like this happened a few years ago. I remember talking to Poe about it. It was against the Dolphins, and it was between him and Hyde where one sliced when he shouldn't have, and they covered for each other. Like, that happens so often for Hyde and Poyer, it seems. They're, they're Again, they're on the same page, and they've been playing together so long that they're able to cover up for each other. Um, like I said, I think, uh, I think Hyde was supposed to slice and take the over, and and uh, Poe covered for him, but Hyde ended up making the interception on the back and very much like this play. So, again, it comes back to you guys playing the system, understanding the system, and being on the same page. Like, that symmetry in the secondary has been phenomenal since McDermott's gotten there. Yeah, he uh, he has guys that, you know, know that they're smart. And, like, when you have guys that are smart, they can play off one another. And if you see some, I mean, there was a play that happened in practice yesterday or two days ago that uh, we lost down, you. Sorry about that. Uh, nope. One dude was down, um, and I was. Oh no! Man. Technical issues in the in the dorms. You there? No, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Right. Matt Milano is giving me a call right now. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, but he can wait. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> Make all pro wait. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like yesterday. I mean, like I was saying two days ago or yesterday, I can't remember what day it was. Um, there were, we were in a, a, supposed to be like a quarters coverage and, you know, one person got sucked down on the run and they're supposed to be deeper. And one thing I did, I was like, oh, damn. I mean, I don't see anybody deep. Let me just close the freaking, you know, post. Right. And that's one thing about our safety, uh, that our safeties and our nickels, like if anything, we see somebody down, we run so much, uh, you know, quarterback vision, you know, mm -hmm. defenses that uh, that gives us the ability as, you know, one one safety kind of is out of position. The other safety closes the post and, you know, uh, and helps out. Man, I'm <laughs> I'm like shook at my core with that play because so for for so much of Dean, like so much of what we do and Eric and I say this all the time, right? Because so we're breaking down film and trying to educate people as much as we can. And we always say, like, no matter how much we know or we think we know, we're not in the huddle. We don't know the play call. Right. And so, so much of like, especially breaking down coverages in today's NFL, like with, with the prevalence of match coverage and all the different rules based defenses and how teams play things, it can be hard to figure out like what coverage a defense was playing. And looking at that one, I would have bet my life. I'd be like, Oh, this is easy. This is just cover three. Boom. Right. Marlo's Marlo's down. Right. Pose in the post. He slices. Boom. This is good to go. Yeah, and yeah. you're out here being like, nah, it was quarters. I yeah. stayed down when I shouldn't have. And so one, I'm shook to my core because I'm like, I'm never going to know what a coverage is supposed to be ever again <laughs> in my life. Second guessing everything now. Yeah, I'm going to second guess everything I think for forever now, yeah. even more than I already do because I'm super paranoid. But two, just like the fluidity that, you know, you and Eric both talked about now, like the fluidity of that, again, like what the call was supposed to be and how that coverage played out just like a regular cover three call because of the functional football IQ and intelligence and ability of you guys to recognize like, oh, okay, he did this. So let me close the post and let me do this. And then it played out like a completely different coverage call. Right. And just, that's just, that's beautiful. Like that's the science or the poetry of football all in one play. Like it's so beautiful. And at the same time um, has just completely shook me to my core and everything that <laughs> yeah. I believe in. Like, if you if if you really think about it, there's probably on average maybe I would probably say sixty to seventy, probably sixty five to seven nowadays sixty five to seventy five snaps in an NFL yep. game nowadays. Yep. Uh, 
I would probably say about five to 10 of those snaps. There are so many like mess ups, things don't right. play like you think it supposed to go. And then like, it, it just, it gets messy and things like, and those happen to be one of them, you know? And yeah. I was a great play on one of the, you know, the plays that could have potentially been messy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's, that's like you said, that's the love of football, man. Like after that, knowing that I was slightly out of position, turning it into a de- uh, basically a different defensive call. And then now just playing on my instincts. And mm-hmm. that's just me. I mean, I've, I've always been an instinctive player. Uh, and that kind of showcased like what I, you know, what I could do. Um, right. Just from the years I've, I've been in this defense, like this defense has given me the ability to actually play like free. And that's what mm-hmm. I, that's what I love about it.